So tell us uh, some announcements you got going on. And I've got it on the board. Yeah, so, um, you know, what's hot, the hot, the hot on uh, the table right now is going to be uh, what's, what's come out with the new CARES Act. Of course, besides the stimulus uh, checks that uh, folks are hopefully getting, and hopefully that's going to get increased, you know, they're going to be releasing and renewing the EIDL. So the economic industry disaster loan. And uh, what it looks like is um, if um, even if you got some last time, you can still get more. If you remember, there was a grant involved with that. And um, it was supposed to be up to 10,000, but many businesses only got 1,000 per employee up to $10,000 max on the grant. And if you qualify, you potentially could get the difference on the grant this time. You know, so it'd be a good idea to uh, keep your eye out on that. Uh, it's it, they haven't opened it up yet, but but uh, just keep checking sba.gov, and um, it it is a little bit uh, different. They they you there's three qual- qualifying requirements for the EIDL. One is that you have to have less than 100 employees, which is less than uh, last time around. So you have to have less than 300 employees. So that com- you know that opens up the door for a lot of businesses. Oh, say um, that say that again. Less than three hundred now, or less than one hundred. Less, less than three hundred. Got it. You have to uh, show an economic loss of thirty percent in your business, and you have to qualify by being in a low income area. At least twenty percent of the poverty rate so the area that you your business is in or your your address is located has to be uh, at least 20 percent of the poverty rate okay so you have to you have to be located your business location not your Correct. home address but your business well, that's, location. that's that's not 100 percent certain because when you're doing the application you have to put your home address so what what i would recommend is if your home address is meets the criteria or it doesn't and then your business does or it doesn't apply just Got go it. ahead and apply worst case scenario you get the call right 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 so yeah. i can just i can just write low income area yeah and or the median income for the area is more than 80 percent than the statewide family income so got it it's either so. more than 20 percent of the poverty rate or the median income is less than 80 percent of the statewide family income okay so i can just write like 20 percent mm-hmm. and um, i can give you a site where you could look at this you could research this oh yeah give that to us that's going to be a census reporter dot org so when you go there, the very first line at the top, you're just going to put your city, and then it's going to give you the full economic and census data for your city. And and down at the bottom, it'll it'll tell you the the poverty rate, and it'll also tell you the the median income for your area. Cool, appreciate that. And anything else on EIDL? So one thing I do want to say is last time around, um, and, and this applied to the PPP, we were talking about this before we got started, is there was a lot of folks advertising on Craigslist and all types of um, outlets, um, you know, guaranteeing people all types of money for, for all types of fees, you know, 30%, 40%, 50% to get 100,000 or 200,000. Or... Now, now those people are under investigation um, and a lot of the people that were, you know, went through them are complicit because ultimately they were committing fraud to be able to, uh, to, to create those numbers. Um, and even if they weren't committing fraud, if, if they were doing a, you know, if the numbers were, were legit, um, this is a, this is a economic injury disaster loan. So as for the law, no one's allowed to charge fees based on performance to, to, to help somebody get these loans. So beware of fraud, beware of, of, of scams, of uh, people that are presenting themselves. Uh, now, it's, it's one thing if you have an attorney or a CPA or, or a, an expert who's helping you and uh, charging you a fee to, 
prepare your documents and gather the, the documents. But honestly, the EIDL is a one page application. It's, it's, the, it's so straightforward and simple. It does not require um, any real assistance. You just need to, to get the documents together. And when you go to the website and you look at the application, it'll tell you right there what you need. And if you don't have it, then okay, you might have to, you know, if you, if you don't have those documents prepared, you might have to pay your CPA to do that for you, but you should not be paying exorbitant fees to apply for the economic industry disaster loan. This is directly from the government. This is not a bank loan. Nobody is making commission and nobody should be making money and, and, and um, taking advantage of people with this, with this program. Got it. I appreciate that. That's, that's super valuable because I know a lot of, uh, especially I, I, I had one client that she went through the SBA the first time, did her loan, got 26K, and then she went the second time, uh, but went through a third party. They convinced her that she was going to get 100K, that she was pre-approved for it, paid like, I don't know, I think it was like 2,000 bucks or something like that, you know, a, a significant amount of money. She actually used part of her original money that she got from the government to pay that person to get more money in hopes that she would get access to all this, right. this, this funding and ended up being a, you know, a, a scam, yeah. right, a fraud. And so, yeah. she, you know, she's out of that money. That's um, unfortunate. And, you know, I wanted to definitely shed some light on that. I know a lot of people watch my videos, so this should definitely help a lot of people and, you know, bring that to light. You, there's, like you said, beware of fraud, beware of fraud, scams, and no need to actually pay someone for this unless you're working with a lawyer, a CPA. I know I actually, um, my CPA actually did it for me, uh, right. no, no charge. And I think that was ethical of her. She could have charged me just for her time and I would have gladly, right. uh, you know, paid for that because right. She's a professional and she, you know, she's doing my taxes anyway, I, you know, right. added to the bill, you know what I mean? But random Joe Schmo on the internet promoting this, not mm -hmm. ideal, so. Yeah, good to yeah. I mean, we, we saw, I, I heard stories with the, with the PPP, which we're gonna talk about next, um, where, you know, the, the, the way that was calculated, the loan amount is based on two and a, two and a half months payroll. So I, I spoke to a couple people who, uh, uh, basically, what from what they told me, their their annual revenue for the business was two hundred thousand dollars, and they're telling me they got a hundred fifty thousand dollar paycheck protection program loan. I'm like, how does how does that even work? If you're, you know, how, what was your payroll? And they're like, oh, payroll was like, you know, fifty thousand or whatever the case is. It was very low, and so I'm, I'm wondering, well, if your pay, if the the algorithm for the loan is two and a half months payroll. And that's basically the loan amount. How how did you get one hundred fifty thousand? Oh, I, I I saw an ad and I answered it, and they they charged me fifty percent. They told me um, they could get me one hundred fifty thousand. I just had to pay them fifty percent. And I said, wow. Well, I hope that's not going to come back to bite you in the butt, you know, because ultimately it might not happen right away. It could happen five years from now that you get an audit, and um, you know. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to answer for that. And even though you hired an act, a third party to do it, you know you signed the documents. And um, ultimately, that third party, they're gonna have to deal with their their crimes as well. So yeah, just beware. Be very yeah. careful. Um, so it's almost even worse to actually go with a third party, get the money, actually, you know, and then years down the road, you get audited by the IRS, and and it's not. A, a forgivable or it's not within the parameters and you're well, then at that time, I, I mean, you could not only would it not be forgivable, but it, it could be considered a completely fraudulent loan and you could be facing, you know, serious, uh, legal penalties, not just fines, but it, it could be, you know, jail. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm glad my client didn't get the money. Um, yes. because, someone like her and other clients of mine would be so excited they go start using that money make it and then oh man that's yeah well i, I yeah. pray everybody does heed the warning and um you know definitely avoids that and just goes yeah. go go the proper route you know 